Okay, next thing we're going to go through is inheritance. Now there are two types of inheritance in Java, extends and implements, and I'll be going through both of them. Um, what the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to um, create a different type of callout, which is a synonym callout that will uh, basically give different results to, uh, every time I call it. So instead of just giving fizz, I might give fizz and then synonyms to fizz for a while. So let's get started. As usual, I'll be starting with the test code for this. And what I want to do is that I want to create, uh, first of all, let's print something. Like here. And then let's copy paste a bit. These I can reuse a bit. Just call it calls2 for, uh, for the sake of it. I'm not going to change this line because it's still going to be callouts, but in this case, I'm going to give different alternatives. Three different alternatives. And that should be all I need to do here. Let's create a new fist bus around this and test it. So as you notice, it's going to be not going to be many changes. Synonym callout is going to inherit from callout, so I can use it just as any other callout. Uh, and whatever changes they are going to be are going to happen inside the synonym callout uh, class. I will need to, of course, import it. Otherwise I can't create it. Um, and I might actually be a bit lazy and show you another way of doing imports. I can put an asterisk here and that means import everything inside the example uh, library. Um, this will slow down my compilation a bit because it will go looking for what's available there. It shouldn't affect the runtime anything. Um, but so. And it's clearer if I know which uh, class I'm looking for, which package I'm looking for, it's uh, easier to read if I actually specify it. But if I am lazy, or if I am going to actually use the entire package, then I can be lazy and just put this asterisk like this. Um, this actually supersedes the two lines above, so I don't have to keep them, uh, because the third line here will uh, import those classes as well, as well. And again, for clarity, I might want to keep those two lines, because I'm using FizzBuster specifically, I'm using Colot specifically, and then I'm also using the rest. Sort of sloppy here. Uh, okay. Let's create the class for it. Synonym callout. It's in the same package. And this is how I specify that I am extending this uh, the callout class. Uh, it's in the same package, so I don't have to import it. What this means is, as usual, that everything that's in callout is available to me. I, all the methods, all the um, attributes and everything. In the same way as you would in, expect in C++. If it's public in the parent, it's public here. If it's protected in the parent, I, it's still protected here. If it's a private in the parent, I can't access it, just as in C++. Um, in Java, I can only extend from one class. 
So if I need to extend from two classes, I have to find a different way of doing it. Typically I would use an uh, inner class or something like that to, and extend that one from uh, the different parts that I need. But I can only extend from one class at a time. This is Java's way of dealing with multiple inheritance. They basically say it's not allowed. There is another way and that's the other type of inheritance and I'll come back to that one. That is um, an imp just an interface. And those I can uh, implement any number of interfaces. But if there is functionality in the top class like this, in the callout class for example, there's functionality, then I can only extend one of them. So, how does this one differ? First of all, I have a, an array of synonyms. And I might want to have an indication of which one is the current synonym. Starting with the first one. Let's use the constructor here. It's a public constructor, of course. And this constructor takes a number and a list of synonyms or an array of synonyms. I can now call the parent constructor. So this constructor from callout, I can uh, invoke, if it's my first line, I can call the parent's constructor with the help of super. And let's see, let's take the first uh, synonym that I get here. Assuming I actually get any. I'm going to um, I'm going to assume that I do get a list of uh, or an array of synonyms and it's not empty. And then store away the list of synonyms. Okay, so that takes care of the initiation. Um, as you notice, the uh, the old if I split this and, and then I'll open the, this class. The my number and my, my callout, they are not directly av available to me because they were declared as private. So I have to work, uh, if I want to change those two attributes, I'll have to do that with the help of the methods that was in the callout class. For example, the constructors. That's why I need to use the super uh, here because I just I can't just allocate uh, values uh, and copy values to the, those two attributes without using the um, the publicly available interface from the parent class. So, what's going to happen in this method? Well, the get call or get callout method. That's the one that's going to change, because in this instance what's going to happen is that I'm going to return the current synonym and then I'm going to increase the, uh, so that next time I get uh, I call this method I will pick the next synonym and the next and so on in a round robin fashion. I'll use the override uh, keyword, I don't need to use that, but uh, it will tell the compiler that I am overriding a method and if I happen to make a mistake here uh, the compiler will tell me that no you're actually not overriding a method did you type the right method uh, signature maybe there's something wrong there double check your code it also helps uh, future readers of this class to understand that this is not a new method this is actually an, a method from the parent class that we are overriding Parent callout. I will basically call again. I can use, I can call my parent class if it's in the first line uh, in the method, uh, and get the current callout from there. And then let's increase the uh, the current synonym. Like that. 
increase it and if I hit the length, uh, if I run over the edge of my available synonyms, I go back to the beginning. Like this. Uh, and then I need to change the, ca the uh, current call so that the next time I call it, um, I'm going to get the next one in uh, next synonym. I'm going to call the set callout method. And then return. So I'm working in and out of my parent class here. I'm getting something from the parent class the get, via the get callout method. And in order to actually not just end up in a circular loop, I'm going to uh, specify it's the super get callout method that I want. The parent class get callout. It's not uh, this one that I'm defining here. Um, then I'm doing stuff locally in this class, and then when I call the set callout method, again I'm not going to declare that method here in this class, um, which means that I'm going to use the one uh, in the parent class by default, uh, which will change the uh, callout, the current callout. So next time I call the get callout method on the parent class, I'm got, going to get the next synonym, and so on and so on. We can fix the to string method as well. The problem is that I can't just say um, I, I still can't access uh, the number and the current callout or anything like that. So what I need to do is I need to get the uh, those values from my parent. And then I can modify it. This isn't uh, normally. I would uh, I wouldn't bother very much. I would basically just get a new, uh, create a new two string, which is uh, uh, very unique for this class. But in this case, I want actually to use the values that I had in my parent class. Um, which need, means I need to do some uh, replacements. And of course this isn't really good because uh, now I'm... Um, I have... In two places in this class I am... Uh, I have encoded the knowledge that my parent class is called callout. Uh, here, in terms of the string, that I uh, got from the toString method of the uh, callout class and up here where I say that I'm extending the callout class this isn't really nice and tidy but um, just to show you what you can do so I replace the class name there and um, let's replace something else as well, let's replace uh, the end of that array or that printout with something else. Take the array of synonyms and make it into a string and then uh, put back the ending end bracket there return the string that I generated. That should actually if I come back here, if I now compile and run that should actually be more or less what is needed. No, of course not. Oh yeah, of course. Um, it is complaining that in this case I'm trying to give all of these as different uh, arguments, whereas in fact what I want to do is I want to create a new array.
and I want to give it a number of values to begin with. So new array of uh, a size to be determined and here comes a list of elements to put into that array and then you know the size basically is what I'm telling the compiler. Okay, so that sh took care of this then. So now I have the synonym call out here and I am calling, what am I calling? That should be five stands, fives. I should get different values here. What's going on? For all the fives, I should get different values. Okay, that's odd. Um, hmm. Now what is going on? And now you get to see me sitting in uh, a live session and uh, trying to figure out what's wrong with my code. So, this one, uh, apparently I am creating it as I should. Uh, and. The problem is that I am not, if I look at the output down here, one of them should say something else here. So, if we check here, uh, I am creating a new fist buzzer down here, yeah, and I am doing the test on that one. Yes. Ah, here we are. I renamed that one and I forgot to put it there. Ah, sorry. Compile and run again. Now we get something. We get fives first time here and then it changes to femur. And then we get the Spanish Chinko, and then we get back to fives again. Same time, same thing down here. Uh, and now it's the latest one it printed was five, so next time I call it, it's, I'm getting Femo, and then Chinko, and so on in a round robin. And when I look at the debug output, I have the synonym callout. Uh, with the value 5 and the array which I should print in a nicer way uh, just test that here's an array of strings that's not nice anyway so coming back to the summary yes this was one type of inheritance the other type of inheritance is implements 